Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, continuing on my series as the nation of Austria embroiled in the midst of the Great War. And uh, I've done a couple of things off camera, as I often do in between episodes, just to kind of do some tidying up and cleaning up of some things. Uh, just go over those real quick. I did add a ideological ideological crusader, which will help me with my monthly opinion among like-minded countries, which in this case would be democracies. I'm hoping that'll maybe ease things up and maybe prevent some other countries from entering the war. I don't know if that'll be the case or not, but it can't hurt. I have a ton of political power to spend. Um, I also bought a uh, chief of the Air Force, which will help me with my air superiority. And the other thing I did was I made a couple of small changes to my garrison out here. Um, for some reason, I, I was... I gave him a garrison order to help defend this area as well, rather than just the coastline. And I want these guys primarily just defending the coastline. Their goal is to just stop the British from invading my coast. So uh, those are the things I did. We'll continue on. My goal, hopefully in this episode or the next one, is that we push Russia to the point where we trigger their civil war. The Soviet Union comes to exist, and that takes off all the pressure, and eventually I can help overthrow the uh, the Tsar there in Russia. That'll get them out of the war, and then I can turn these forces to the West. The other thing i got to think about here is um, I just don't feel like the Ottomans are going to be able to hold out against all the Allied forces that are attacking them. So with that said, I'm actually going to just take all the forces I can out of there and get them into Austria and hopefully salvage those units before they get overrun. And we'll just build our defensive line right here after the Ottomans are overthrown because I just don't feel like they're going to last. And I feel like that there's a lot of fighting that's going on here that's really, there's no point to it. They can't possibly hope to succeed. So I'm going to get them out of there, hopefully salvage some of those units, and we're just basically going to give up the Ottoman Empire. It's more ground that the Allies have to cover. And eventually my, my hope is that we get Italy into this war and we get Russia out of it. So we'll see what happens with that. Let's check on my available planes in reserve. I've got quite a few. Um, in fact, there, I just developed a new one. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. We... Um, I don't know what kind of those are. Those are bombers. No, they're fighters. Okay, so those are the first true fighters that I have. So that's that's really good news. That's helpful. Um, also, I'm already working on air doctrine. Let's take a look for a second at where we are in land doctrine. Already working on that. How about support battalions? No. Infantry. Weapons, too. Here we go. So we're a little bit ahead, but not much. It's still only going to take three months. And that's going to give me a nice little bonus to my infantry brigades. So we'll get these guys out of there. If I can get some of those divisions home, then I'll go ahead and throw some of them to the Russian front. If at all possible. Alright, we're producing. Yeah, we don't have to produce that plane anymore because we don't need the scouts anymore. We now have real fighters to build. Yes, let's cancel that production line. There we go. So now we're going to start producing early fighter two. All right, there we go. That may affect, yeah, it's going to affect my trade a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we need to change. Not going to need that anymore. Going to need to trade for some more rubber from the Netherlands. Otherwise, we're good to go. Of course, manpower is once again an issue, but I've actually got an idea on that one. And I really wish I hadn't overlooked it as long as I have, but I've been so focused on trying to get Italy into the war, which I just got 
that national focus, which now gives them an op an option to honor the Triple Alliance. So we'll see what they choose to do. Let's take a look and see what they're doing right now, actually. Uh, they're working on claiming German Africa, so that makes me a little nervous. That makes me think that they're thinking about joining on the side of the Entente, which would be unfortunate. But down here, if we go to Recruitment Propaganda... It gives us a 100,000 manpower bonus. That would be very helpful on the Russian front. Let's see how these units are doing and getting out of here. It looks like some of them are getting out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and take some of these units and start assigning them to the Russian front. No, no, there we go. Again, the goal for me right now with the Russian front is that hopefully at some point we get far enough along here that we trigger the Russian Revolution to happen. And then that should ease things up tremendously. And eventually actually lead to the Russians being out of the war altogether. So I want to draw that offensive line. I want to just look and see where the where the objectives are. No, 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 no. That's not what we want to do. Absolutely not. That was not at all what I wanted to order them to do. So we're just going to kind of build this bulge out right to here. I think maybe that'll be enough. Taking Minsk and some of these other cities here like uh, Kiev. That might be enough to trigger a revolution in Russia and get them off my back. I'm not producing close air support? I thought it was. Yeah, they're not navally invading me right now, so... All right, things are looking pretty good along the Russian front, so I feel pretty good about the direction things are going there. Plus, I'm going to get this boost in manpower in about two months, and that's going to make a big difference, I think, as well. Historically, obviously, the Russian Revolution uh, didn't really affect things this early. I don't think it had even started yet. Really just terrible situation that happened to the Tsar. Um, I don't really feel like Tsar Nicholas II was a bad guy. Um, he actually seemed like he was a decent guy who uh, just was kind of stuck in the system that Russia was a part of, but it, it was what he was born into. It wasn't like he had a choice, and I don't think he particularly even enjoyed the job of being Tsar. Um, but he and his entire family taken into the basement of a house and basically just murdered without trial. Um, they told him there was a trial, but they, of course, weren't part of that trial. So we're in November of 1915 now. There was a, Ru a Russian, uh, attempted a Russian revolution in 1905, but that didn't really succeed, obviously. But the, uh, the revolution that really took hold in, in Russia happened in the, the early months of 1917. And it started in the city of Petrograd, which is uh, right here, the, the capital city. Um, today it's known as St. Petersburg. During the Soviet Union, it was known as Leningrad. But uh Soviet Union, of course, moved the capital from 
uh, that city to Moscow. All right, so obviously you can see that the Ottoman Empire is being overrun now by the French, the Portuguese, the Brits, and the Russians from this side. But at least I got most of my divisions out of there. Not all of them, but quite a few. A lot of the divisions I had, I had there were actually being loaned to me by the Ottomans. Ottoman Empire actually lasted a little bit longer than the German Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Lasted until about 1922, 1923. Uh, so, uh, 1916 Berlin Games. Isn't it interesting that Berlin hosts the Olympics? Uh, is supposed to host them right in the middle of World War One, and also was actually the host of the Olympics not long before World War Two broke out. All right, so uh, mid-November 1915, continuing to make progress against the Russians. We've got some unassigned divisions here. I'm going to go ahead and assign them to the Russian front. I want to pause for just a second and take a look at my air situation here because I want to uh, make sure that I'm getting all of my units into the, into the field that I can here. I've got these scout planes, obviously. I've got some more bombers here. Oh, I don't have the manpower, so we're not going to be putting any new air units into the field until we get that 100,000 in manpower that we'll get with that next national focus. Continuing to press things forward here, though. So the Russians have now lost over a million men. Germans have almost lost two million. Ottomans are going to capitulate here before too long. Japanese have lost 152,000 now. All right, the enemy has air superiority in Ukraine. Let's do something about that. I'm going to go ahead and switch these guys over to Ukraine as well. All right, we're closing in on Minsk and Kiev. In fact, I might have already taken Kiev. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my production here. Yeah, we can't deploy the submarines. I get that. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that production line for now. It's going to leave me with some empty dockyards, but uh, they're not doing me any good producing those anyway. Now, we can get these new units into the field, even though they're not fully ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and send them all to the Russian front. Pressing ahead just about to the objective. In fact, we are at the objective on this side. Yeah, they're not going to have any naval invasion anytime soon. All right, so Ottomans are just about out of this thing. Yeah, the I was, I was talking earlier about the, the empires, and obviously one of the uh, things that happened after the armistice... Oh, and there we go. Ottoman Empire has capitulated. They can no longer withstand the pressure from the occupying French forces committing travesties throughout the country. The Ottoman government has gone into exile. Their main forces have capitulated, and France is now in control of their home area. Though the war against France and the rest of the Entente continues, this is an unfortunate setback for all of the Central Powers. These are dark times. Now, free civilian factories. That means we're going to continue to 
Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and build some trenches here along my southern border. And uh, you know what? Let's keep working on the coastal fort. Come on now. There we go. We'll get them all up to level four. Whatever I can do to make it harder. I swear, my ESPN app only gives me updates when I'm making videos. And I always forget to turn off the sound. All right. Also got an issue here with trade we're going to have to deal with. And it appears the game has kind of hung up on me here. Okay, so what has happened? There it is. All right, that's what it was hanging up on. Okay, so Tsar Ni Nicholas abdicates. Demonstrations have forced the poor Tsar into official abdication. Though the Tsar has named Grand Duke Michael as his successor, the Duke has declined this offer. The appointment of a weak provisional government, which shared power with the Petrograd Soviet socialists, led to confusion and chaos, both at the front and at home. This army became increasingly ineffective. The Soviet Union has declared war on the Russian Empire. So there we have the Soviet Union. They control Petrograd. They control Moscow. And I think this is going to suddenly get much, much easier for me on the Russian front. So let's take a look real quick here at trade. Going to need some more oil. And we're not getting it from Romania so easily at the moment. So we're going to trade from the Netherlands to try and pick up some of the the need that we have there. I just got to watch here because now France borders me. Um, so obviously we could go in and we could probably start taking some of that territory. In fact, let's go ahead and create an army for that purpose. Which doesn't have a lot of men so far, but eventually we'll have more because I don't think I'm going to need all of these units on the on the Russian border anymore. Okay. So I can start shifting some of them over to this side. So we'll create another army here. Which is going to be a new Balkan front. We used to have a Balkan front, but then got rid of them. Because I changed this one to the coastal defense. So they're going to be on the border here with the French occupied Ottoman Empire. The Great Mongolian State joined the White Movement. So I would guess that means that part of the Soviets, yeah, right here, they're going to be allied with the Russian Empire. Though, hopefully, with our invasion happening here, um, wow, and one of them just is going crazy over here encircling Minsk. Um, that's going to speed up the fall of the Russian Empire in favor of the Soviet Union. So let's see here. Um, we'll go ahead and give these guys a goal of kind of moving forward a little bit into French-occupied Ottoman Empire, which this is now, I guess, kind of the border area of uh, what is now Greece. Yeah, you can see we're, we're having a lot more success here now up there. See how close we're getting to, uh, we're just about to finish re recruitment propaganda, which is going to give me a nice little boost of 100,000 men. So in the Russian Civil War, you had the the folks who were on the the side of the uh, the Bolsheviks, which would be the uh, what became the Soviet Union, and you had the Whites, which were kind of the counter revolutionaries, and and they were kind of resisting that recruitment propaganda. There's a hundred thousand men, which will disappear really fast. But then I've got another one here. I can actually create a Polish Vol uh, Wehrmacht, which would be a Polish army. Uh, it's gonna 
give me another 100,000 men, which will be very helpful. So I feel like the tide is definitely turning here. We're going to get the Russian front closed before too long, once the Soviet Union is able to win out in that civil war. Then we can shift all of those units over here to the east or to the west, maybe help out Germany, definitely push back down here, and maybe at least push to this point right here um, where we can take Constantinople and just at least make it a little easier to defend my southern border. As you can see, I'm succeeding everywhere along the front now. Also starting to have some issues where the game's kind of lagging and hanging up just a little bit. All right, so another uh, unsuccessful naval invasion by the Allies. Pressing ahead here, looking really, really good. I don't know how close we are to driving the Soviets out, or to driving the Russians out of this war, but they've lost 1.1 million men now. We've still got some ways to go. We're about a fifth of the way to causing them to capitulate. And it looks like the Belgians have got, well, it's uh, three divisions from Belgium and 11 divisions of the UK. So I'm having a little bit of trouble there with them. I'm going to go ahead and shift a few divisions over to help out. And as you can see, the manpower is gone again. Just because uh, I'm still kind of short. Let's take a look and see. I'm still about... 60,000 short of what I need just to be back at full strength with the divisions I have in the field. Once I get that other manpower from this next national focus, I'm definitely going to have to pause and create and get some of these other air units into the field. tanks as well. Hopefully I've got some of those tanks into my divisions now. So the Portuguese are holding most of what is now Turkey. Oh, come on, silly Brits. You're not going to have any luck there. And actually, it looks like uh, that was a naval battle with the Japanese. It's really weird to see Japanese ships in the Adriatic Sea fighting a war. All right, so this one's way ahead of time. Don't really want to focus on that just yet. How about trench mortar? That's only 121 days. We'll go with that. All right, we're just about to push up to the line that I set as my initial goal with the invasion of Russia. Looks like the Soviet Union is pushing back on all fronts as well. I'm just hoping that we'll do just enough to get them to take over that nation, and that'll end the Eastern Front as we know it. So I'm going to try to push through on this episode until hopefully that happens. It's hanging up. I'm paused. No wonder nothing's happening. Outdated equipment. Oh, yeah, we're pr still producing infantry equipment one. So here's what's nice here is that we, even though I don't have any manpower, which means I can't really mass produce a bunch of new units into the field, uh, here I can focus my production on new infantry equipment that will go out to, uh, to the troops who need it. So I can kind of slow down on creating things I don't need. Of course, that means a change to the resources we're producing. This is a bit of a problem. There's not a lot of options as far as trading for wood right now. That'll change once the Soviet Union wins out. I can trade with them. All 
All right, we can stop trading with Romania for oil. I guess we still need a little bit. Chromium, don't quite need as much. Rubber, same thing, don't quite need as much as I did before. So it's kind of a constant battle when you make changes to production. You also have to make those changes to the uh, to the trade to reflect that. Yeah, well. Bulgaria has capitulated. Great. So now that kind of furthers the need to take all this territory and push back there. I'm going to pause for just a second while I just continue to look at what my needs are in terms of trade. Okay, I can trade with the Germans for some of this. All right, we're good everywhere now. Just about got the Russians pushed back all the way to the the line that I set. We'll have to see how much further we need to go in order to help the Soviets win there. Still only 22% toward capitulation. Yeah, I'm going to need more divisions down there than what I've got. Once this battle's won here, I'm going to shift these 14 divisions. Oh, those are Russian or uh, German divisions mostly. All right. All right, so we're shifting a bunch of units. No, I didn't want them to go there. I wanted them to go here. There we go. So I'm going to have to promote this guy so he can handle the, the larger force. Make him a field marshal. And then we're going to set that goal of pushing all the way through to Constantinople. with those 54 divisions. It's going to take some time for them to get into place, but I'm shifting them from the Russian front because they're definitely not needed there anymore. So I've still got 85 divisions on the Russian front. That's going to be more than enough to get the job done there. I'm just getting an early start on what's going to happen next. Looks like the Germans are still fighting it out over here in the Ottoman Empire and the crumbling few territories left. So the Germans are going to lose those divisions. They're going to get surrounded and destroyed. Germany is not managing this war well so far at all, considering how many men they've got. All right, we're getting closer to getting that next 100,000 men still about three weeks away. probably going to be the next episode before we get Russia out of this war. Germans have lost over 2 million men now. But we're getting enough divisions down here now that we're starting to turn the tide in the invasion of northern Greece. And obviously that boost of another 100,000 men is going to make a big difference down there. And I've got to get air power down there as well. In fact, let me go ahead and take a look at what I need to do with my planes to make that happen. Here we go. Western Balkans, come on. 
I guess they probably can't. They're, I might not have the... Uh... Alright, where can we reassign them to? I may not have enough air in the way of air airfields to make that happen. No, I've got, I've got the capacity for it. There we go. We're going to move that close air support down there to Bosnia. And then from there they can they can cover this. Let me double check that and make sure. Yeah, that's pretty efficient. It's 80%. It's not ideal, but nothing's ideal about not having enough men to do the job, so Oh boy, what's going on here? I see some British units in this area. Okay, so the Brits have landed a force up here in the northern edges of Russia. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here at the end of February, I think, just because it's uh, not quite where I want it to be. But I still think Russia is probably going to be out of it soon. Yeah, they're at 30% toward capitulation now. We'll get those extra men here in eight days. Well, the uh, world tension is finally up to 33% now. I still need it to go quite a bit higher in order to be able to change my conscription laws, which would really, really be helpful. So we've got a battle here going on between 53 divisions on my side and 24 from the UK, Belgium, and France. I think that's probably who that is, yep. Getting closer to finally finishing up this first land doctrine tree. And it looks like we've got a, a new armored vehicle. To put into the field as well so where I lack in manpower I can hopefully make up for in terms of technology we're gonna go for early heavy tank too as well so now obviously we have outdated equipment in the field that would be the uh, early armored cars we're gonna replace those now armored car 3 going to slow down on producing planes just because I can't get them into the field anyway. Of course, now we got to make a change to trade, and that'll be the last thing that I'll do here. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that off the screen. won't bore you with that, but just to kind of review where we're at, uh, pressing ahead on the Russian front, I've kind of slowed down just because I'm hitting the border that I, I set, and uh, we're going to focus on driving the Brits off of this peninsula right here and then turn our uh, attention to linking up with the Soviets and hopefully winning that Russian Civil War for them. Going to hopefully eventually press through uh, right to Constantinople right here so it's a little easier to defend. And then hopefully we get Italy into the war on our side. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's my goal. So uh, we'll come back tomorrow with another episode. As always, I appreciate any advice that you have any uh, questions you have, anything at all, use the comment section below, and uh, I'll try to answer that as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.